Forget everything you know about taking sharp photos because in today's video, we're gonna be going over camera settings that affect sharpness and also how to nail sharpness every single time. What we're not gonna be talking about is how to turn a blurry photo into a sharp photo because that's just not possible. If you want sharp photos, you need to get them at least 95% of the way there, right out of camera to be able to get great sharp photos. So how do we get it 95% of the way there? If you're wondering why your photos aren't coming out sharp, there's a high chance that you're using the wrong shutter speed. One of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of beginners make, even professional photographers make, is using the wrong shutter speed. In fact, I can guarantee you that this tip alone will probably fix your sharpness issues. Shutter speed determines the length of time your sensor is exposed to light. The longer that sensor stays open for, the more movement and motion you're going to capture in your shot. This means if you're shooting a moving subject like portraits and you're using a slow shutter and your subject is swaying forward or just happens to move their head or you click that shutter button, your hands kind of jitter, you're gonna capture all of that motion in your shot resulting in a not sharp blurry image. To make sure you're getting a nice sharp image with a lot of detail, you want that shutter to open and close as fast as possible to freeze any action or any movement in that split second that your sensor was exposed for. Now the general rule a lot of beginner photographers are taught is to double your focal length. So if you're using a 35 millimeter lens, you wanna shoot at one over 70 or the closest number to it, except I like to use that number as a baseline, as a guideline to never go below that number. There's nothing wrong with setting your shutter speed higher than this number. In fact, the higher you set this number, the faster your shutter is going to close and freeze motion, the sharper your photos are going to be. So for example, when I'm shooting portraits and I wanna retain as much detail and sharpness as possible, especially in my subject skin so that I can skin retouch later in post, I'm usually shooting or never going lower than one over 250 shutter speed. And sometimes on a super bright day, depending on the lighting conditions, I can be shooting all the way up to one over 4,000. Now, similar to using the correct shutter speed, you wanna make sure you're using the right focus mode. Like I said at the beginning of this video, you can't magically make an out of focus shot appear sharp just by dragging Lightroom's sharpness slider. So shooting with the right focus modes is extremely important. But how do you know which mode to use? Now there are two modes that are pretty common across all cameras. One is AFS or single shot autofocus and the other is AFC or continuous autofocus. If you're shooting on Canon, this is servo or AF servo. If you look at the Fuji X100F, we have three modes on the side. We have C, which is continuous. We have S, which is single shot. And then obviously M for manual focus. When shooting still subjects, shooting in AFS or single shot autofocus is going to be a great option because you know your focus isn't going to hunt and track different objects. This works really well with still objects. When shooting moving subjects, you want to use AFC or continuous autofocus. And the reason for this is because AFC is going to constantly track your subject as they're moving. So if I'm shooting a subject or a model who is 10 feet away from me and I get them to walk towards me and I'm holding down my shutter button in burst mode, AFC is going to do a great job tracking the subject while I'm holding the shutter button down. It's gonna constantly track our subject. If I do this with AFS or single shot autofocus, it's actually going to lock focus from the time that I started my burst. So when the subject is 10 feet away and I hold that burst, I'm in AFS, single shot autofocus, it's gonna lock my focus where my subject started and as they're walking, it's not going to track them. Meaning every shot is gonna be out of focus except the first one. So it's important to choose the right focus mode for what you're shooting so that you never miss focus. Now different lenses will have different characteristics. Some lenses will be sharper than others and some will be softer than others. If we look behind me here, I like to shoot with Sigma lenses because they are extremely sharp. If you're shooting with a 
prime lens, prime lenses are gonna be sharper than zoom lenses. And that's because there's less elements making prime lenses sharper than zoom lenses. Now there's also something called lens sweet spot and almost every lens has it. Sweet spot is that time where your lens is the sharpest or the aperture where your lens is at its sharpest. And typically this is one to two stops more than your widest aperture. So with this lens here, it is a F1.4 and it's going to be sharpest at about F2, F2.8. Now, one of the reasons why a lot of people buy these faster, more expensive lenses is because let's say you wanna shoot at F1.4, doing it with an F1.2 lens or a faster lens, it's gonna be sharper than an F1.4 lens at F1.4. And that's just because you're getting more into that sweet spot range on the F1.2 lens. Again, every lens is different. This might not be the case with your lens, but aperture and the type of lens you use are very important in getting sharp images. But hold on, what makes a photo sharp to begin with? The one thing that everyone should understand is that sharpness is really just contrast and light. And this is why you probably heard of perceived sharpness. The more contrast, hard and straight lines in a photo, and harsh bright lighting in a photo, the more that photo will appear sharp, even if it was slightly out of focus or not tacked sharp. If I light this object with a harsh light source, you can see that it actually creates a lot of contrast and makes those edge details pop a lot more. Contrast, lighting, and focus is really all sharpness is at the end of the day. Lastly, when it comes to shooting in low light, you're gonna be battling noise. Noise can make that sharpness or that contrast or that edge detail become unclear and appear less sharp, especially in those higher ISOs. The higher you increase your ISO, the more noise appears in your shot and the more sharpness and detail you lose. Again, this is really only noticeable in those higher ISOs and I guess depending on the camera you're using. But if you still wanna shoot in lower light situations and you wanna retain as much sharpness as possible, here are some things you can try. Use a tripod. A tripod will allow you to use a slower shutter speed, expose your shot brighter with a lower ISO value. Now, a tripod really only works if you're shooting landscapes or subjects or objects that are not moving. If you're shooting things like portraits, you can't really use a slower shutter effect, like I mentioned before, because you're gonna introduce motion blur in your shot, unless you tell your subject to stay as still as possible. But what you can do is find ambient light, get your subject as close as possible to it. That way you don't have to use a higher ISO. You can also use faster lenses. Instead of using this F2.8, you can use a F1.4. This lens here will allow two stops more of light than this one, which is crazy. With that being said, get out there, test out these tips and take better photos. I have a lot more stuff planned coming up. I'm going on a big trip at the end of the month, a few other trips, and I'm gonna be taking you guys along. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.